Good afternoon. I am Superintendent Marty O'Shea, and we are here for another edition of the Superintendent's Corner. Today I'm joined in a conversation with Chief John Dearborn from the Longmeadow Fire Department and Chief John Stankowitz from the Longmeadow Police Department. Uh, we thought that it would be important to bring to the community today our conversation relating to school safety and uh, what's happening in Longmeadow Public Schools with our public safety partners to ensure that we are prepared and able to respond to uh, a variety of school safety issues and uh, potential emergencies. So one of the things that has impressed me since my arrival uh, in Longmeadow Public Schools is the integration of uh, safety protocols and safety planning between Longmeadow Public Schools and Longmeadow Fire and Longmeadow Police. And uh, a lot of it is uh, born on or rests on the foundation of the, the strong relationships that exist at all layers, certainly uh, with myself as superintendent and, mm -hmm. and the two of you as chiefs, but uh, even uh, among our administrators and the guys on your crew. And so uh, we talk a little bit about that and how those relationships have um, given us a good foundation for ensuring that we're prepared and able to respond to school safety issues. I think a lot of it has started back in um, right after Columbine, after 1999, um, your predecessors um, began the school safety committee meetings and um, we kept um, providing that same level of commitment to providing school safety since then. So we've been doing this for a long time, Ari. So it's something new and something we're um, very passionate about and we want to provide the safest schools for our children. Yes, we have, uh, uh, we have quarterly safety meetings mm -hmm. uh, that consist of officials from Long Island Police and Fire, uh, school administration, uh, DPW and other town officials, our town manager even has been involved in those conversations. So um, how, have the, how have you seen those quarterly safety meetings uh, helping promote school safety? Yeah, I think the information sharing about <coughs> all levels of staff, um, your, your principals, your teachers, your, your, the various administration, uh, identifying needs, uh, if there's areas that they feel we need to be better practiced at, better planned for. Uh, that, that information sharing has really been the foundation for a lot of the initiatives that we've started out, started on the last couple of years. Um, and it really has uh, paved us a, a pathway forward. And I think we take, with the uh, bomb scare exercises we've done and the other emergency plan we've done, so uh, it's, it's invaluable. Yeah, we definitely would like to talk a little bit about the, uh, some of the tabletop exercises that we've been involved yep. with. Uh, an important person in, in the um, safety meetings is our school resource officer. Mm -hmm. We're fortunate that the police department is able to furnish us with a, a, a school resource officer whose sole job it is to um, ensure that uh, students are safe here at school and respond to emergencies, but also uh, she's involved in a lot of preventative work as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, yeah. it's Officer Pam Chaplin. Um, she's been doing this for three and a half, almost four years now. And she's really ingrained in the school community. And every year she just keeps putting out more energy than I, I it's, it's just amazing the impact she's made on the school community. Uh, and I hear that from not only residents, but uh, faculty as well as administrators too, and school staff. Um, some of the things that she's involved in, she does a freshman orientation as well as um, instruction in, in health, forensics classes, um, but she's also involved in the self safe homes community, uh, and she works with adjustment counselors, uh, counselors and administrators as well. Um, as far as what she does, she assists with bomb threat assessment. She um, she looks at, she does investigations within the schools. Be, believe it or not, we do have vandalism, larcenies, uh, kids who come to school with uh, different types of narcotics and drugs. She does an investigation with that. Also with bullying. Um, and her, I think her biggest um, asset is her social media savvy and her training and what she's given out to the community as far as educating parents. As, as we all know, um, the social media aspect um, is something we don't have a lot of knowledge on, but she's able to share that with the parents and educate them. Yeah, as that's, well. she's been a great asset to our principals in that way and her, her ability to kind of navigate that social mm. media world that yeah. our, our kids are so involved with now. and, yeah. and uh, she's able to help us uh, track down information that's important to keeping kids safe. So that, that's been mm -hmm. a great asset. And 
you know, frankly, a lot of communities don't have that, uh, the benefit of having full-time school resource officers, so we, we feel really fortunate that that's the case. Uh, and unfortunately, Marty, last year um, we started seeing her being drawn away from the high school, yeah. and she started to have more of an impact um, because of her knowledge and people are feeling confident with her abilities um, at other levels, uh, middle school and elementary, they're calling into her as a resource as well. Right. So we're looking in the future of maybe um, keeping Pam at the high school, but we're going to have to start looking at probably um, putting in a part-time or a full-time SRO in both the elementary and middle schools yeah. because it is an effective resource for everybody. You know, given given the you know hundreds or in the case of the high school, the thousands of people that are concentrated on a single campus, it kind of mm -hmm. makes sense to have right, public absolutely. safety represented on a regular basis. So that, sure. that's been that's been a great asset to us. So when we uh, uh, when we start the school year, uh, you know, one of the things that I'm proud of is that I feel like we're in a in a go position because so much planning goes on over the summer to make sure that our buildings are ready to go and that we've got safety protocols in place. And um, Chief Dearborn talked a little bit about some of the inspections that happen yeah. over the summer to make sure that we're ready so to go. So almost right after school, end for the year, we, uh, uh, my fire inspector, uh, Captain Jay McSodic, gets back in the schools, uh, starts having some discussions with uh, the facilities management folks, custodians, uh, on some goals to prep for next year. And those goals can be simple as d door repairs, um, fire alarm system maintenance um, improvements, and that really goes on through the summer. Right, uh, just be prior to school opening, uh, we come and we do our master inspections for the year. Um, and I can tell you that over the last couple of years, the school's been in phenomenal condition. Um, but we test um, all the doors, um, the fire alarm systems, uh, to make sure those alarms are transmitted quickly to the fire department so we can have a quick response out. Um, and we've really been fortunate in this community that we're engaged with the facilities management folks from DPW and the schools are normally in very good shape. Yeah, so, so on a somewhat different note, um, pedestrian bicycle safety has been an important initiative of, of mm -hmm. the police department and our kids have benefited from that. And can you talk a little bit about yeah, that, Chief? It, it, I think Longmeadow is pretty unique. We're a walking community yeah. and um, that's reflected in a number of crossing guards we have. We have 23 crossing guards. They're managed by Sergeant Car Carl Mazzafaro, who does a phenomenal job. Um, training, hiring new crossing guards as need be. Um, plus he goes out and sees them um, periodically. We have, um, we have a Safe Routes to School um, initiative here in Longmeadow, which uh, basically what that means, we're, we're targeting those high uh, traffic intersections and that's where we're put, putting our uh, crossing guards to ensure that our kids arrive at school safely as well as get home safely. So that's one of our big yeah, issues. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're, again, fortunate that we have the, the dozens of crossing guards, mm -hmm. you know, um, scattered in, in strategic places across town to make sure, sure. the kids are getting across. Uh, and there's there are crossing guards. We understand that. But, you know, we do have limited resources. So right. we're doing the best we can with what we have. But what uh, Sergeant, Cal uh, Officer, Sergeant Mazzaferro has also started is the I Walk, which is a great initiative once a month. He uh, coordinates it with each of the elementary school teachers, and they um, pick a location and they walk to school, both with parents and students. So yeah. we're trying to. It's, we're trying the, to uh, it's the walking school bus, right? Where, exactly. Where, where, uh, and it's great because it, it engages school staff, it engages families, it engages police, it engages mm -hmm. kids, mm -hmm. and you, you kind of create a you know a safe walking route to school and. And as they walk by homes, they'll they'll collect students, or they'll mm -hmm. they'll have a, a particular place where they'll gather to ensure that they're walking safely as a group. So, um, you know, certainly, I, I think most members of our community would be really familiar with uh, you know the the fire drills that have been in place for decades, yep. and uh, and yet maybe many community members aren't or less familiar with um, some of the other drills that we've been involved with. One of the things that um, I appreciate the fire department taking the lead on is gathering us together for uh, tabletop exercises. And so with these tabletop exercises, we gather um, public safety officials and school personnel, and Chief Dearborn puts us through our paces and uh, asks us to consider how we would respond to uh, particular emergencies. So maybe you can talk a little bit about the, some of those activities that we've been involved yes. with. Um, so these are scenario-based um, exercises. Um, we focus um, this year on bomb threats, uh, which you know everybody's seen in the media. Um, we'll have a scenario. There's all kinds of different types of threats that may come in. Uh, we'll provide that to the staff. Um, and 
you know, one of the neat things I think that's happening is that we're uh, integrating all levels of staff, uh, custodians, uh, secretaries, the principals, the administration, everybody sitting at the table along with the public safety officials. So everybody's a stakeholder in it. Uh, we walk through the scenarios. We have a lot of great discussion. We refer to the plans that are in place now uh, through emergency uh, response guides. Um, and I really, I, I've been really enthusiastic about it and seen um, how people are really engaged in it. And um, we've actually come up with some of the questions that are that you wouldn't anticipate. Right. Um, I think the other part of it too is that, that provides building blocks for the other emergencies that we may not encounter, uh, but we're also at the same table. Um, when we've had different incidents that we've dealt with together, it's not the first time we've talked about it. Right, so right. That's I think we, cool have, we have a, a sense of, of uh, our approaches and how we would respond, and we have, I think, a, a set of expectations of each other now that, Absolutely. that we've established that I think if, if, um, if we were if unfortunately something did uh, arrive, that we I think we would be prepared for it, uh, and that's I guess the the modern realities we face is that we have to be you know uh, spend a lot of time preparing for things that we hope never happen, uh, and we talk with the fire department and the police department about um, hostile intruders. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, the police department has been involved in active shooter drills, uh, and I've appreciated that the fire department or the police department has helped us with um, training a school staff on. Again, what we would do, how we would respond to a hostile intruder. Mm -hmm. Maybe and, it, and it's changed over the years, too. It's every, everything is, um, we, it depended on what happens uh, both nationally and internationally, how we adjust our responses. We see what, how to improve it every year. We work closely with the school staff um, and train them. It's, it's basically uh, the school resource officer, it's Pam Chapel and Captain Fontaine, who have uh, spearheaded these trainings. Um, and what we found out is we started including the fire department last year, and they're instrumental in our response as well. Not only is, is to how do we respond with um, attending to those who are injured, uh, how do we extract them from a building in the, in the event so that we can uh, redu reduce mortality yeah. if, that, if that's the case. One of the shifts that school personnel have had to undergo is um, being able to respond flexibly to a, to mm -hmm. an emergency, to a, to a safety event, to a hostile intruder. You know, whereas 10 years ago it might have been locked down, pull the blinds, huddle mm -hmm. in a corner. Now we're advising school personnel to make the best response they possibly can given the information, the intelligence that they have about an intruder. And that's a paradigm right. shift for the uh, teachers too because right. they're just saying, just tell us what to do. And right. it's like now we're empowering them to make decisions based on the information they have at the right. time. And I think what we have seen in the past that this has been positive response and saving lives. Right. Yeah. And again, you know, th these are things that um, we, we don't like to talk about. They're, they're not, you know, no. it's not first nature to us as educators, but increasingly I think we, we understand that we have to be prepared for these situations, uh, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and the drills go beyond the things that we're talking about here. Just the other day, uh, we had a uh, pool safety uh, yep. drill mm -hmm. uh, where school staff worked with the fire department and police department to um, uh, plan out or, or uh, how to respond to uh, an incident in the pool area. Yeah, and this has yeah. actually turned into a, an annual event for us. Yep. Um, we kind of we have a plan that if we have an emergency in the pool, um, whether person's in the pool or out of the pool, how we're going to respond, what resources we need. So uh, this actually last drill was as live as we could make it. Um, we didn't do a lot of pre-notifications on the drill. Um, we didn't respond to lights and siren or anything, yeah. but we took people that were on normal patrol or, mm -hmm. or at the fire station. They responded and actually walked through all the different steps that we need to safely the rescue person or or get them to the hospital. And, and you know, the more realistic we make these drills, the, the better we can identify issues if there are any. I can tell you the feedback in the pool rescue drill was it was, yeah. it mm -hmm. was just about perfect. So, yeah. so you know, investment you know, with, with some reward on that. Yeah, we, so. we appreciate how you keep us on our, on our toes. <laughs> uh, and I think it's important for parents of the wider community to, real, to understand that we have, um, you know, medical emergency response plans in place. Uh, every classroom has an emergency management guide. And those plans, those guides have been developed through these quarterly safety meetings mm -hmm. and through with input from, from police and fire. So that's been, that's been greatly appreciated and, and really, really helpful. Um, you know, we're finding uh, that, that technology is taking us in new directions, I think, in terms mm -hmm. of school safety and, and our ability to be prepared and respond to safety events. Um, camera 
technology has been mm -hmm. helpful in terms of uh, surveillance, reducing vandalism. Is that something you like to talk about? And it's, yeah. it's, it's interesting because uh, that's, we're noticing that um, surveillance cameras are popping up everywhere. Um, as you, you go on Mass Live, and you know we use, use, use utilizing that as a tool as well in order to identify individuals. But we also do this on the high school campus. Identify uh, Pam Chaplin is also um, there's been minor accidents on campus, so we're able to identify the operator um, who is operating those vehicles and um, come to a resolution on those things. But um, also to keep individuals safe within the schools. Uh, but what we're looking to do is it's only. Um, at the high school currently right now, we're looking to enhance that and increase that and put it in the other schools because we see the value of this. Yeah, we've definitely seen the benefit uh, mm -hmm. here at the high school and I think you know if we were able to increase our capacity, our surveillance capacity, I think it would, be, it would benefit everybody. It's a really a preventative tool at the end of the day. It's not like we're, we're looking to catch people necessarily, but I think when, when yeah. folks know that those cameras are rolling, that they're they're going to behave in different ways, I suppose. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and I yeah. think that's and that's the benefit of it. Yeah. Um, but it also helps in investigations. I, I'd be perfectly honest, it helps in investigations. Um, but there is that sense of security, and if we can uh, view some of these um, exterior locations from the dispatch area of the police station, we can monitor it through 24-7 yeah. coverage too. And obviously, it helps us monitor uh, visitors to our buildings, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, with good cameras. Our secretaries, our clerical staff, they're able to uh, monitor who's coming into the building and, and make sure they're letting people in who, who belong in the building. Right. So, um, AEDs, defibrillators, is another technology tool that uh, we've employed to yep. keep kids safe. So, um, from a community perspective, we haven't deployed on all the police cars, all the fire vehicles. We have them in various locations in town buildings and throughout the schools. Uh, I think we're looking to expand that a little bit more, make them readily available for sporting events. Um, you know, it's certainly if the quicker you can apply an AED and, and utilize it, it's a, a life-saving um, intervention. So we're really looking at that. We'll probably look for some some more support in that in the coming years. So. Right. And then uh, finally, with regard to technology, there's a, a new tool that we're looking to bring on board. It's called CopSync. Uh, CopSync is a software that provides it's it's real time threat alert service mm -hmm. uh, that where school staff and police would be able to talk in real time in the event of an emergency and so uh, we're fortunate that the school committee uh, supported the purchase mm -hmm. of that tool. Uh, we're involved in planning some training right now and we hope maybe by the end of the year, certainly next year, we would be operational with CopSync and I know that that's something that you supported as well, Chief. Yeah, exactly. It's like anytime we can uh, pass the information on in real time um, and we can be notified and, and again, it's just responding for an emergency, a medical emergency. It doesn't have to be of nefarious uh, um, incidents. Um, but what we're looking to do is be able to uh, communicate that information uh, not only to the officers on the street, uh, on their laptops, um, but also in dispatch. So their dispatchers can dispatch the appropriate resources um, quickly and more efficiently. And you've been clear that it doesn't replace 911, it supplements it. And, and again, for folks at home, CopSync would allow uh, if there were an intruder in a building, uh, in addition to calling 911, school staff would have, CopSync would pop up on a device, on a, on a laptop or on a, a desktop computer, and they would be able to notify police in real time what they see. Right. You know, and I, and yeah. I think, Marty, the, the benefit of this, it notifies the faculty and staff within the school so they know what's happening um, at the same time they're alerting um, public right. safety. Everybody has access to the same exactly. information yeah. and then school staff can make informed decisions about what to do if, they're yeah. fa if we're faced with a hostile intruder or something. Right. Other. It gives yeah. everybody situational awareness. Yeah. So that's the big that's yeah. It. yeah. So there's, uh, there's, you know, I think um, hopefully as a result of this conversation that uh, the community, our parents will understand uh, some of the activities that we're involved with. But uh, again, I'd go back to where we started that a lot of this uh, rests on a foundation of strong relationships between Absolutely. police and fire and the schools uh, at every layer uh, from our custodians to uh, our clerical staff, principals, other administrators and, and obviously staff throughout each of your departments. So um, on behalf of Longmont Public Schools, I want to thank you both for, for your commitment to school safety and uh, thank you for your time and we'll look forward to another edition of the Superintendent's Corner.